So I want to start off with a question, uh, just to think, and this goes back to one of the talks this morning about testing code as infrastructure. If you think about how you order a pizza, and say you want a cheese and tomato or a mozzarella cheese or a vegetarian, um, there's lots of different options uh, for that. And if you look at the menu, you say you want a vegetarian pizza, would you go and say, put a thin layer of sauce on the dough, sprinkle some mozzarella cheese on, add a handful of onions, add a handful of peppers? Which goes to the approach that a lot of us as programmers think in terms of procedural, where we put it out in pseudocode or we go to the actual code of how we're going to do things. Rather than using a declarative approach, which this is an example which kind of crosses between both Puppet and DSC, where you declare, yes, this is my order. I want tomato sauce, I want mozzarella cheese, and I want these vegetables. This is much easier for a person to write and understand. Uh, it can also be made understandable to a computer. And this is really switching from a procedural model, which we think, to a declarative model. Because when we're looking at top-level organizations, declarations tend to be more understandable instead of obscure, hard-to-manage procedures. As programmers, yes, we're happy with procedures. In terms of the specification, declaration tends to work better. It also gives us the ability to manage a diverse set of distributed services, which can often quite cross the boundaries between Linux Windows and even the network operating systems. We're also increasingly working in a regulated environment where we need traceability and auditing. And of course, there's the ever present need to do more with less. So in this session, what I'm first going to cover is what Puppet and DSC have in common. Then I'm going to look at the Puppet value add to DSC and then I'm going to go do a case study on how, and this actual turned out to be an actual case study for us in Puppet, how we manage a Windows Services Update Server, or WSUS, with Puppet. So, looking at the commonalities or similarities between DSC and Puppet, both are a declarative DSL, or domain-specific language. Both are used to configuration. And the syntax and the models are actually quite similar between the two of them, as I will go and show. So if we take here on the left, we have a DSC example of, in this case, it's a very simple one, where we just want to create what we're calling a fruit file. We have this keyword, which is common to both languages, called ensure present. Um, destination path, which we're saying fruit.txt on the C drive. It's a type file, and the contents are going to be just apple and pear. We can model this in DSC Lite. Now, there are actually two modules in Puppet, one DSC and a relatively new, new one called DSC Lite, which I'm going to be using as the basis of this presentation. If you want to ask me ask, afterwards, I will go through the differences. So we can see here we are using DSC. We're giving it a resource name, fruit file, which can be anything. It just has to be unique. And this is the resource name for DSC and the, mod mod the module, which is PSC, desired state configuration. I've had to do a bit of font fiddling on some of this just to get it to fit. And then these are the properties, which are almost identical to the DSC properties, except that we have a preference for lowercase uh, for the puppet properties. But other than that, they're identical. So the puppet value add for this is looking beyond the fact that the two of them are similar as a language. It's similar syntax to DSC, so you can get up and running quickly. Puppet allows you to la manage a large set of diverse nodes covering Windows, which we're obviously covering here, Linux, Mac OS, 
Solaris, AIX, Cisco, and quite a few other. It is quite interesting, and I mean, I tend to be at the butt end of some of this because I work on the agent and platform team where we have to get the puppet and agent to actually work and test it across something approaching 15, 40 or 50 different OS version um, combinations. Um, on the Windows side, it provides you a cheaper alternative to Active Directory uh, GPO model for Windows. Some of you may be using Active Directory. It is a cheaper and somewhat simpler way to manage policy across the nodes without having to get into Active Directory. Puppet also comes with a very large library of existing resources, which are also called modules, to aid capturing and managing your configuration. There's modules out there in the Forge you can use. You can also write your own. It gives you a common, sorry, I beg your pardon. It gives you common management tools and a common interface across all the platforms. And the big difference between it and the ESC is it gives you change tracking and auditing, and I will be demonstrating this. Yes, there is some level of auditing in DSC, but Puppet gives you a much more powerful facility that works right across your domain. Just a very simple view of the architecture for Puppet, uh, where we have a user here as an administrator. We have a Puppet Master, and in our model, we're just using one Puppet Master, which we've tied to GitHub with what we call a control repository. So you automatically have source control or version control over your configuration using GitHub. You can also use GitLab, you can use TFS, you can use a number of other um, source control systems. Sorry, my microphone seems to be slipping. And then you have a number of agents here, and I'm just showing an example of a Windows one, um, a Mac OS one, and, sorry, a Mac OS one and uh, Linux. It can scale up, and this is the scale um, that we show for some of our architectures running between 40,000 and 20,000 nodes. We do actually have one customer that is running upwards of 60,000 nodes. And within that, you get into a much more complicated master, um, master compiler configuration with, with Puppet, which I'm not going to delve into here, but by all means, ask me afterwards if you want to. Um, just a short picture, which I will be showing you on the console, um, of the change reporting. And this, as I say, is one of the real value adds for Puppet, that it allows you to track change over time and zero in on who's changing what on the system, because it may only be one or two rogue nodes that are actually changing. We have this concept of changes being classified as failures where something goes wrong, which obviously then needs your attention. We have this idea of corrected corrective changes, where there is, um, we have this concept called drift, where systems drift out of the configuration that you're expecting to, to be in. We have intentional changes where you're deploying a new configuration, and that's okay, but you still want to track the data goes, the day go okay. And you have the status quo of unchanged, which should be the default for the bulk of your configuration. So what I'm going to do now is jump into a case study. And um, this actually happened to me about two months ago because I was kind of debating when you do a demo like this, oh, well, I'd like to present something as real world. So um, some of my colleagues over the years have given out because sometimes I like to tell stories. And I mean, I'm Irish anyway, so we do like to... So um, we've all been in a situation where we've discovered something we've been in, we, that's been unmanaged or something goes critically wrong. I, I can remember quite vividly something that happened to me almost 15 or 20 years ago where somebody was saying to me at lunchtime just before I went out, our bill server, we only had one bill server in those days, um, is behaving funny and I thought I'll look at that when I get back from lunch. And at that stage, when I got back from lunch, the damage had really been done. Uh, one of the sysadmins had run the equivalent of RN-RF on the server and deleted everything. We discovered no backups when we went to recreate things. Um, 
a lot of our essential configuration wasn't written down. And that's when you really do learn the value of being able to recreate what you have. In this particular case, I was transferring some of my workload over to a team in Romania, and I was over there in March with them. And everything was going well because we had a very well-documented process, and it really was. Until I came to the part where I was talking about preparing the golden images for Windows, and I was going through the whole process because we use Packer for generating our golden images, and discovered that I had created this Windows Update Services server about two years ago and used it because I was the only one using it and never documented it. Um, it wasn't backed up, and it was kind of one of those situations where we looked and thought, gosh, this is something I need to do. And then when I talked to the people who maintain our Puppet configuration, because we do use Puppet internally to manage our infrastructure, they said, well, this would be an ideal case for using DSC. And I thought, gosh, this is great, because it actually gives me something to talk about here as well. And we are actually deploying this configuration in the next few weeks in our Puppet configuration. Um, it also is an example which you do find quite often that you have an unmanaged system and you need to just incrementally change it as part of the continuous improvement process to your infrastructure. So it's not unusual. So I don't know how many of you have dealt with WSUS, but it's a fairly standard um, MMC or Microsoft Management Console configuration. In other words, it's not friendly. Um, I can see it's when you start it, um, it gives you this helpful wizard. Um, you have to go out to the roles and profiles on your server to enable the um, update services feature, the updates RSAT feature. And then you're on the configuration window, configuration wizard. And really at this point where you specify the proxy server and you go on, and you press to start connecting, it then goes away for 10 or 20 minutes to think about things. So you're kind of stuck there, and then you have to wait for to, to synchronize, which can then take another two and a half, three hours. You have to come back and then see, is everything okay? And then con continue your configuration. In between this, it has this beauty, which is about the best way of describing it. Currently, for the demo we're doing here, there are 326 different categories of products to download. This is a flat model. There is no, um, how do you call it, proper nesting in it. So you have to go right down the whole thing by hand and configure it. And in our case, we simply wanted to configure it, configure it for the operating systems. In other words, going from Windows Server 2008 R2 and... Uh, 2008, yes, because we have a lot of customers who still do it, so we need to maintain images for those, right up to 2019 and the Windows 10 LTSB images in between. So that is really all we need to code into this. And you can kind of see as I step through how we did the configuration. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to briefly switch over to a server and actually start the puppet run for this. Um, then I'm going to leave it. And um, hopefully you can all see that. And I'm just going to start a, a puppet. I beg your pardon. This is where I develop finger trouble and I bring up the wrong um, server. So I'm just going to start a puppet run. The reason I'm going to do that is that it um, kind of goes away and thinks. So um, it is easier if I just start um, that and we just go back to the presentation. What I'm going to do is step through the code. I've prepared it on the slides rather than running back and forth on... Um, Visual Studio Code, although I have to say I'm quite impressed with a lot of people up to now that have done it. Um, just put this briefly if you want to photograph it. The slide pack will be available um, afterwards anyway, and I'll put it up on Twitter as well. Um, all the examples in this and all the code that we're using in the control repo is going to be available in this repo, including this particular file, which I'm going to be running through because it's the main kernel of the configuration for this. 
Um, all of these demos are based on um, the PowerShell Gallery Update Services DSC, which is the module for this, and this is the, um, the PowerShell repo for the code. So taking a look at the, at the configuration, um, and there are various categories of updates, and in this case we're interested in the critical updates, the definition updates, security updates, and service packs. And being Microsoft, these all have lovely GUIDs. So you can start off by expressing these just as variables, which again is just one way in terms of readability. Um, I mean, I haven't even put comments there other than something at the top, really, because it's pretty obvious from the variables what we're referring to. Um, this is a, a hack that you need to do with Puppet because you need to make sure that the local configuration manager is not working in refresh mode because Puppet really takes over. It's going to be doing its uh, refresh every 30 minutes. By default, the Puppet agent runs every 30 minutes, although for the purpose of this demo, I've turned that off so I can do the agent runs um, at will here, just simply to show it to you. Um, I talked before about having to enable um, certain Windows features, and this is the Puppet code that does it. Again, um, using uh, DSC, Windows decides desired state configuration, and we're saying we want this resource name called Windows Feature, and we want it to be present, and it's update services. So it's a case of just saying, uh, make sure this Windows Feature is present. And this require here says um, this um, configuration element needs to be configured before this is done, so it's a case of enforcing the... Um, the dependencies in it. Um, we will see this again down here in terms of the require when we move to the next step. I'm saying that uh, before we do this, these are, these are required as a prerequisite, so we're saying the update services feature and the update services RSAT feature. By the way, these names here are really whatever you want them to be, but they do need to be unique. In, in terms of the catalog, so and it allows you tracking. I will be showing that you this later in the login because that's how you identify them in the login. So here we are saying the resource name now is update services server, and it's going to be update services DSC. And again, the ever present ensure present. You can, by the way, do this in terms of ensure absence because you might want to say a particular package, for example, you definitely do not want your users to be using this package because for, there might be some corporate policy to say, do not use this. Um, I've put the content to, there in just CWSUS. Typically, you'll probably want to put this on another disk completely so that um, because this is one of the features of it, you can run out of space, but at least it doesn't cobble your operating system. It will just cobble the server rather than the operating system. Um, it's a very common thing in databases. Um, in this case, I'm saying the languages are just English. Um, there's an interesting one here because when I was doing it, um, we actually need to select English, French, and Japanese because those are the operating systems we are interested for localization testing. Uh, but I, when I tried to do this, I discovered you couldn't. So I now have a PR up and I'm trying to get this pushed through the system to fix this in the um, update services DSC module so we can fix this properly for us. Um, you can put an asterisk in there to just to get everything. Um, I'm saying synchronize true. And there is an issue with this, which will, I, I will show in the example that's specific to Puppet. Um, it's not a fatal issue, but it does throw an error during the, the initial um, Puppet run. Um, we have the list of products and classifications, which I've just put with ellipsis there. I will show those later on, but I just wanted this to fit in the slides. And I've said that I want this to synchronize automatically time of day at 15.30. I'm not sure why I chose that. It should really be somewhere in the middle of the night. 
Um, but again, these are various parameters. There are some other parameters you can do that, but this saves you the endless tick boxing, which is one of the whole features about being able to manage the configuration programmatically or declaratively rather than having to step through a horrible GUI. Moving on, you will have seen this before because I've already put it in an earlier slide, but this is the list of products which really just slots in in the earlier slide. And um, the classifications, um, again, this is simplicity. Actually, I could probably just use an array for this as well, um, and we'll be doing so when we implement it in our own module. Um, the same for the cleanup rules, um, update services, cleanup, and um, I haven't, um, I beg your pardon. Sorry. This is the classifications. This is used back here in this slide, and it is also used in the cleanup rules. Um, sorry, in the approval rules. I have a typo there. So uh, these are the approval rules, which, um, again, we give it a name, enable, synchronize, and we give a list of classifications. And again, with this one and in the previous state, the previous one we see we're saying these require the update services entry to be present before we do this one. And we are going to see this working in, in the example now because what, we're going, what I'm going to show you because of the way this runs, um, we, get, um, we do get a failure in the initial run. So um, again, um, just looking at this, back to this example, um, what I'm going to do now is have a look at the agent node on Windows where I've set this up. And you will recall um, a moment ago where I started the agent run here. And it is running here and it is apparently hanging. So what I'm going to do is just scroll back a little bit just to show you a few things that happened earlier on. Um, that is well locked and will take the best part of 20 minutes to finish. Um, excuse me while I get my glasses. So this is where I did the Puppet Agent T. And generally, if everything's running nicely with puppets, you get this calm in green. If you get yellow and red, you tend to need to worry, particularly with red. So because this is the very first time we've run, Puppet is registering itself and just creating a certificate and doing that. Um, we are then retrieving the plugins, which takes um, a short amount of time. What that's doing is pulling down a lot of modules or plugins from the server, um, which gives you quite a bit of output, which I am just going to skip down to the end. Um, we are now getting to the point where we are loading the facts. Facts are where Puppet determines the agent or determines the state of your operating system. It gathers a bunch of facts then compares them back with the, sir, with the puppet master to decide what it's going to do and grabs the catalog appropriate for this machine, which is WSUS4. I've created four for demo purposes and it applies this configuration with a particular ID which you can then use to track your configurations that you're applying. Um, the very first thing it does is fix up things to do with puppet itself which we don't really need to worry too much here. And um, it is now then installing a package, package provider here, Chocolatey, because it's very useful. I'm just getting it just for demo sake here to install um, Chocolatey, Process Explorer, Process Monitor, Notepad++, Git, and 7-Zip, just because they're useful and they're useful for me to have them on the box. And again, if you want to have a look at the control repo, I will provide some guidance on it so you can navigate it, just examples of how to install packages. But again, that's just to show a little bit of how you do. Um, we are then doing, if you remember, I said there was the set LCM DSC provider set refresh mode disabled. That's the 
resource name we've given it to. So we're disabling the local configuration manager refresh mode. And then, if I just scroll down to the end here, we see it is thinking. It has applied the update services feature and the update RSAT. In other words, it's loaded those particular roles onto the server, and it is then now trying to apply the update services service. And if you remember, I told you before, the whole synchronize takes about two, two and a half hours, which is what is actually happening, and that is going to go away. Now, the problem is that Puppet has a timeout of about 20 minutes. So Puppet Agent itself will, after about 20 minutes, error and say, I failed to apply the configuration. But actually, the DSC resources will continue to work away. So I have one that I prepared previously, which I spun up this morning. And that uh, ran this morning. So if you just remember a moment ago what I was showing, um, this, this point where it did the roll, and now it has thrown up a number of errors. The errors aren't that friendly, nor are they quite correct. It is something that we probably need to maybe fix with the module and with the pu puppet code to tidy it up a little bit more. But we obviously see that the update services cleanup has failures dependency. It was not able to apply that because of failed dependencies, which is why you get the yellow warnings there saying it wasn't able to apply it. That's a warning. But then these red ones here say, look, it's, um, um, it's failed here. So what I'm going to do here is do another repeat run and um, I'm probably just going to have a talk a little bit here because it's going to take a moment to run here. While it does, oh, um, Why did it do that ultra friendly for me? Because I have set that to a nice font of uh, Okay, uh, apologies. So it's applying a new configuration, which is going to take a moment. Um, but what, if I look here now, apologies for the very small, but if you do see there, there are a lot of security updates waiting to be approved here. Um, because in the initial synchronize, it is determined that there is about five and a half, almost 6,000 security updates. And the same for critical updates. So what we will see is because um, what we'll see here is it has successfully applied the update services cleanup rule and is then going to start working on the approvals rule. And OK, I'm being a bit fortunate here. It's actually working. Um, so you can see that count there has gone from 4,536, um, it used to be 5,700 and something, it's gone down and will continue to move down, which is um, the approval rules starting to work. What I will show here as well is if we look at the automatic approvals, we will see that this approval rule has arrived in there. And if you um, look at that rule, um, it's kind of um, has all the tick boxes, but those tick boxes correspond to those GUIDs that I showed you earlier. So I am going to uh, just check back here and hopefully we'll see a bit more progress. Yep, it's down to 15,000. That will gradually go down to zero there. So. That is a, 
a short demonstration of um, how Puppet can be used just to apply that configuration. And um, what I'm going to do now is um, looking at, to look at change control. And I have another um, machine ready, but what I want to show you is the Puppet console here. So let me just make that full screen. So this is the overview, and I will refresh it just so that um, it gives us um, We should be seeing some failures there. I'm not quite sure why I'm not. Uh, but we can see an overall count here in terms of summary. And this is a kind of a very top-down picture of your whole system. Remember where I said you can talk about 40,000 nodes or more. This will give you the summary right across your enterprise. You can then zero in to have a look. So I can have a look at the nodes here with intentional changes. And it will tell me that this node here, which is the um, node that I've actually just done that run on, and I think it has just completed. So because we've done that, let's have a look at that report. And we can see that we have had an intentional change here on the approval rules and the update service of cleanup. So that has said that it's actually, this is just a summary. But if I look at the log here, it will give me more detail. Um, down to the code, it will tell you which configuration has been applied here. And it has given you a notice that it has done this. Um, now these reports are only at the resource level, so you are at, dependent on how you structured your puppet, and sometimes the DSC code as well as to what level of reporting you can do. Um, but it does allow you to zero in on the, no the nodes. Um, with PowerShell, yes, you can do that if you look at the event log, but you have to go into each event log or you have to use a pull server or some events capturing um, system to go in and look at particular events and collect that. Um, whereas, as I've made the point, Puppet does allow you to do this so um, I'm going to go back to the overview here again and just refresh here. And um, we have, um, as I say, a note here with um, intentional changes which, which we wanted. So what I'm going to do now is um, do the bad actor. And um, because I wasn't sure if... Um, that earlier demo would finish completely. I've got a system here that is sitting here all configured and everything. And if I do a puppet agent minus T, I will expect this to come back exactly the same here with a nice uh, sea of green. But I'm going to take a look here and see that there um, are no products waiting approval. Everything is ready the way I expect it. And what I'm going to do here is go and make change, th change things because and I'm going to just throw in a few extra products here um, that I want. You can see how it's horrible here that you just have to scroll the whole way down and you can't even collapse areas that you're not interested in. Um, when I was doing this originally, it was kind of quite difficult just to work your way through and just make sure you had everything there on the OSS because I wanted to make sure it was just the OSS and not the driver packages because the driver packs give you quite a lot. Um, uh, and we've gone back to small font here again, apologies. So um, so please don't do this to me. Okay, um, that should come back, and uh, I just wanted to complete and say no changes um, before I hit the OK button here. Um, well, 
While I'm waiting for that, there are stickers up in the front, just in case I forget to say it at the end, which you're welcome to take, and um, just my contact details as well. Okay, so uh, that has come back with no changes. So now I'm going to go in as the bad actor. And I am also going to go and uh, delete this rule, because really I think, and update files and languages, I'm going to add in Chinese, Hindi, Slovak as well. So I've made a number of changes there. And um, what I'm going to do is do the puppet run. And um, as we'll see, this will take a moment to, um, to do. But it will produce output now because it's detected drift in the machine. And this can work, this as I say will work with the SE. It will work if I, for example, removed Notepad++ or I made any other changes on the system. And um, just for maliciousness sake, I'm going to, um, while that is working, I am going to, spin up the control panel. And um, this is just while waiting for the other run to happen. And I'm going to uninstall Notepad++. So I think because uh, I started that with the catalog, it's probably um, not going to, and well, I'm hoping that it won't detect an OPAD++ plus, plus change this time, because what I'll do is I'll start that run, and then I'm going to go and switch over to the console view to show you how this change happens. Um, and It's like, as we say, a watched kettle never boils. It will always take longer when you're trying to do it. Have you any questions in the meantime, just while we're waiting for this to? Yes, I do have a question. Uh, you mentioned in the beginning that uh, well, this could also be used as a GPO replacement. Yes. As in, is it able to change policies? Sorry, to repeat the question where I said, where uh, I mentioned earlier that it can be used for GPO, and you were asking, can it be used um, to change policies and manage policies on the machine? Is that correct? In the usual user context? Um, you mean in terms of setting user policies? Yes. Yes. Yes, it can, and I had hoped to actually um, put an example into the control repo to show this. Um, but if you want, I, I, um, if I've timed at the end, I'll actually bring up um, some code sample to show you. Yes, you can, and I've done this for our golden images where I've set the policies. Now, you have to use either one of the modules on the forge that allows you to set the policy or a custom module, which uh, one of my colleagues, Glenn Sar Sarty, wrote, which we use internally, but we haven't published. Um, but yes, you very definitely can. And you can set registry entries. And um, I mean, one of the things we do with our golden images, and it's one of the things I can't quite understand with Microsoft, is why they sell Windows 10 in an enterprise environment and they don't turn off what I call the spamware, in other words, the user experience that gives you things like um, Bing and do you want to download um, all these various games? Because um, any enterprise environment I've worked, enterprise admins hate these. So we turned them off completely in our golden images. Um, so looking at this, um, I'm going to do another puppet agent run now again. And um, 
um, we will see that um, it, it, it'll take a moment, but what that is going to do is reinstall Notepad++ for us because I've um, done that. As I said, you can do it the other way around. I could say Notepad++ is an insecure application. I don't want my users to install it, and in which case I would say um, ensure it absent. And all you have to do is put in the name there that normally comes up in the programs of features. Excuse me. And this is disappointing. Oh dear. Um, when I told you this would work and it didn't. Maybe it will detect Git better. I will start that again and um, go back to the console. And looking at the console now, if I do a refresh, um, I should be showing corrective changes there, and I am not certain why I'm not, but what I will do is I will go into the nodes, and I will go into this node itself, and look at the reports. And I will see there that we have a corrective changes there, followed by three successful changes. Now, why that has been successful when it should not be, I don't know. And uh, so we can see here, that the approval rules and the update services have been corrected. And if I look at the logs again there, I will see that uh, there is a notice there for those um, saying that those have been corrected. Um, if I look at the other reports, ah, oh. OK, um, this is. Um, just looking at the global reports, uh, WSUS4 has come back as well and said that it failed. And if we look at the fails there, it's because uh, we did our timeout problem here. Um, and if I do another puppet run now on that, because DSC is still working, it will fail again. Um, so you can see sometimes because puppet runs every 30 minutes and WSUS typically takes two and a half, three hours to do a full sync. You sometimes will see failures there, but those failures are actually expected. Um, and you will know if you're doing it. Um, but you would hope that after about two or three hours, the, the puppet runs will work. Um, I am a little bit stymied as to why um, that one didn't... Um, actually work there because it um, should be able to detect that uh, those products are missing. Um, but my apologies, uh, demos don't always run as intended. Um, So um, just to summarize what I've done here, um, DSC and Puppet gives you the best of both worlds. Um, it gives you the similarities of DSC, um, allows you to do more with less, um, allows you to express your infrastructure as code that all the teams can use. And it broadly is a lot more understandable than individual PowerShell scripts, for example, to configure a WSUS server. 
allows you to leverage and use your PowerShell DSC skills with Puppet directly using the DSC Lite module and get going quickly with Puppet. Um, just before I take questions, I've put on the slide pack, and I will put the slide pack up in the control repo as well. I'll tweet it. Um, I've put in um, some references to the DSC modules. Um, I've also put in a number of blogs um, available on it, um, some links to our other products, and just, just some acknowledgements because um, the original talk on DSC was on the DSC rather than DSC Light uh, was by James Pogren, uh, who's USB based. So um, I will come back and show you as well on um, um, some code for GP, GPO models, modules. But is there any other questions first? Yep. Um, yeah, um, there is a puppet module that allows you to apply, apply Windows features. Is there any reason why you would use DSC instead of that? Um, no, it's whichever you're more comfortable with. Um, you can mix and match um, um, Windows. I mean, we have a Windows file resource. I just showed you the, the expressing it in terms of DSC Lite. Either will work fine. Um, there is a... Um, a good set of puppet modules, and I'll show you the list um, that you can use that allows you to um, do quite a lot of Windows operations, some of which overlap with DSC. Um, but with DSC Lite, you can actually use any. I mean, there is no DSC module within the DSC, the original DSC module for to manage update services um, at all, which is why I had to use DSC Lite. Uh, but if you're already up and running using the DSC module or any of the other Windows modules, use away at them. You can intermix. Um, okay, um, since you asked, I will go and actually bring up some real life code. Um, Uh, let me just um, make this readable. And apologies. Uh, is that readable or do you want me to change it to a lighter? Um, so if I look at my control repo here, um, we have a puppet file. And um, that lists um, all the puppet modules um, that I just by standard, I'm not actually using all of these, but you have ACL, Chocolatey, DSC Lite, which we're using. There's IIS modules, PowerShell, Reboot, Registry, and uh, WSUS clients because it's quite useful. And again, we use it internally to ensure that all the laptops in the organization are properly configured to use our internal WSUS server. Um, looking at, it will just take me a moment to delve down and find um, the puppet code. Um, Um, this is using a module, um, but um, you can see there where I've set the PowerShell execution policy unrestricted. And what you do there is you look up the, I think actually I've got the link up at the top, uh, GP search Azure websites to find out which particular policies you want to set. Uh, and then you can set them, and um, 
Um, I mean, there's a favorite one, uh, disable server manager at logon. So when you log on to the uh, Windows server, um, it's disabled. Yep. Uh, when offering, uh, well, when using the DSC light resource, do yes. you get the same level of data sets that we would expect when just writing the normal DSC resources? Yes, well, I assume you're talking about the visual code, the puppet, um, the puppet add in for a visual code. Yes, yes, you do. Um, the guy who wrote that module is the same. Who? Well, the guy who's actively working on the the, the Puppet VS Code uh, also wrote the DSC Lite module. So yes, he he does. Um, so the question was, do you get the same level of intelligence for DSC Lite as you do with the DSC and the other modules? Yes, you do. And that intelligence is the. Um, um, if I can show you here. Um, this is the um, the puppet um, add-in, and I mean, if you're not using it for uh, Visual Studio Code, I would strongly recommend it. It's had a very interesting side effect in Puppet, which is at heart originally a Linux shop. Most people use MacBooks. Uh, most people used Atom. But when James wrote uh, this add-in, um, Visual, Visual Studio Code has become the um, standard editor you, uh, used within Puppet simply because of this add-in. And um, yeah. So I think, are there any other questions? Um, okay, well, thank you very much for coming.